morning everybody look at this beautiful forest we have here it's a gorgeous day today a bit windy but overcast and maybe raining all day so perfect for photography i love these overcast days because it's just you can do 12 13 14 hours of straight photography and the light is always good what the plan is for today is since restrictions are slowly but surely lessening and we're able to travel a bit more i've been thinking about where i wanted to go next and i think i'm going to do a couple trips within canada before i actually start traveling out of the country but it kind of got me thinking there's a few parks in the area that i haven't checked out so as kind of like a last hurrah before i start moving around and traveling again i kind of want to check out these parks for the first time One of the few birds that I saw in the forest was this American robin, and I wanted to hear your opinions about this interesting behavior. I've seen it before where birds shake caterpillars around to stun them before they feed them to their young, but I've never seen a bird be this aggressive with a caterpillar. You can even see the guts flying out as the robin shakes it around. This got me thinking, was the robin just trying to stun the caterpillar, or do you think there was some type of different reasoning behind it? Maybe it was trying to remove a sharp body part like the head, or maybe the insides are toxic and it was trying to remove that. Maybe it was trying to break it in half to feed the young more easily, I'm not really sure. I think it was trying to stun it, but at the same time this thing was very, very dead, and yet the robin kept going. I couldn't find any research papers on this behavior, so I'm curious, what do you think the robin was doing? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories and opinions. Okay, back to the video. We're getting into probably, well in my opinion, one of the most difficult times of the year for bird photography, especially songbirds, because you can see the foliage is basically as dense as it's going to be, so it's harder to see them. And most of these birds have already nested, they've already had one brood, and they've likely already fledged. A lot of these birds that aren't nesting again aren't going to be singing like crazy like they were at the beginning of spring. Yeah, this is going to be rough for songbirds and that's why i'm kind of hoping that when i get to the marsh there's going to be more action all the birds that are singing are high up in the canopy this probably would have been a good time to bring that ladder that i used in the last video but we'll see it's still a nice walk though that's the nice thing about wildlife photography is even if you see absolutely nothing all day at least you're outdoors I just had a good experience and I thought I'd share a tip here. So behind me there's some reeds and there was a song sparrow right on top singing a beautiful song. So originally I started off at 600 millimeters zoomed in tight and it isolated the song sparrow but at the same time it added a lot of compression to the image. So the background wasn't really visible, it pretty much turned it into a full solid white. And the image looked a little bit flat, a little bit boring to me. So what I did was I backed up, I zoomed out to 200 millimeters and I included more of these reeds in the back, so the greenery. Also with less compression, I was able to get some more texture in the background and the clouds. And also I was able to blur out some of the far trees in the background to add a bit of depth. So instead of having a flatter, boring image, by zooming out, I actually was able to give more context, show more habitat. And to me, it's a more interesting image. It's not an amazing image by any means, but it just goes to show you, you don't have to be on top of the birds all the time, zoomed in at 600 millimeters, filling the frame. When I first started out in bird photography, I had people saying, oh, you couldn't get closer. Why isn't the bird like full in the frame? And I thought that's what you had to do originally. So I passed up on so many photo opportunities, like not even trying to take photos because I was too far, but you can get some great photos from far out, some great scenery and environmental portraits. So take those photos, even if you're not as close as you think you should be.
seems like my luck has been changing slowly but surely. I just had two common yellow throats that were really compliant. I got a couple shots of them. Then as I came over here, I found two families of yellow warblers with some young. So I got a few shots of these yellow warblers. Nothing crazy. I really want to keep moving through and see what the area is like and see what else is around. So yeah, not really a day where I'm focusing too heavily on the actual photography, but I'm just getting a few keeper photos along the way just to see what's actually around and just to have as record shots. So I'll keep on. Hopefully we find some more species. Stay tuned. Just as I was gaining some momentum and things started to pick up, the sun decided to break through the clouds and created some really harsh light, so I decided to pack it up, but still a good day overall considering it was my first time at this location. And before I go, I'd just like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives. Their classes cover a ton of topics ranging from photography, videography, editing, lifestyle, freelancing, and so much more. Recently, I've been enjoying a class by Dan Dan Liu called Creating a Modern Cinematic Documentary Film with Soul. I like that she uses one of her own documentaries as a reference to draw examples from and to teach these really important documentary filmmaking skills. Classes just like this are divided into easy to follow lessons with no ads, so you can really just focus on learning. And right now we're giving away free trials of Skillshare premium memberships to the first thousand of my subscribers that join using the link below. So check it out. There's a bunch of amazing learning opportunities. And thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I'll see you in the next one. Happy birding.